Having recently been appointed as the Chief Operating Officer for Prestat Chocolates in London, we speak to Michaela Ely regarding some of the key tests facing her in her role as the business takes on the challenges of the major Christmas confectionery season. So tell us, Michaela, how have you found that first few months in the role? I would sum it up with the word challenging, but incredibly exciting. So um, I've had experience in, if you want, executive positions. I think I have still do a startup in uh, in Italy, and that really was the first time that I had to encounter like executive decision making. You know, like so that really prepared me a lot uh, um, when I first joined Prestat. What I hadn't have experience with is one managing a hundred people and two actually like working in a factory environment. So that was all completely new to me. And I'm not gonna lie, the first uh, month was me coming home in the evening being like okay i'm not sure how we're gonna do this but ultimately what i found was uh in all the different colors that you have of personalities and issues in Preston, what i found were a good core group of people that really wanted change and wanted to improve the company and you know revive and refresh and bring Presta back to its glory days and that always gave me the strength of being like you know what there's no problem that can be solved as long as we do it together the only variable is like how long is it going to take you to fix it so ultimately we really worked there's i always tell the team like there's not one rock that we left unturned in the past eight months else it has been incredibly challenging because you have i think the hardest thing is managing the short-term crisis moments that every day oh my god there's this order that has to go out or there's no drivers there's no agency workers because of course brexit there's covid and everything so you have to like dedicate your time obviously in, in dealing with these very short-term issues obstacles or whatnot but at the same time my job is supposed to be looking at the long-term sustainability of the business you know so i think that is the the hardest thing trying to compromise between these two views short term and long term so are you actually based in london at the moment then are you living in, in london or? i live in london yeah well you can almost say i live in park royal short of right now that i'm physically uh, at home but yes i absolutely love this city and honestly when the opportunity came about to one actually like press that is such an interesting project especially I, I think at my age because you have a fully grown 120 year old you know heritage brand but yet the challenges and hence opportunities of a startup you know like it's so much innovation in not only the product per se but also in the processes so plus being in London, honestly, is just a perfect uh, alignment of the stars, this position. I love and it. You've mentioned there about the, the history and heritage of the Prestat brand there and the connections with Roald Dahl. Yeah. How special does that make the business to be part of in your experience? It makes it unreplicable. And that's the best thing you can want, you know, in a market. I mean, 120 years of history. Whilst I am, you know, a call it millennial, call it what you want. I'm super pro innovation, startups and everything. I find there's a cultural values to these heritage brands that is, uh, you know, that we have a responsibility to preserve and to communicate. So Prestat has had, uh, you know, five different uh, ownerships and every single family, it was always families that owned Prestat, added a bit of like spirit and color and their own personality to it. And honestly, my goal now is to tell that story. Honestly, it has an incredible story. And it's not only like the relation with Roald Dahl, obviously he was inspired to write the My Uncle Oswald from Prestat and we still really cherish that relationship. Um, but also like the Royal Warrens, we received both the Royal Warrens from the Queen and the Queen Mother. And that is something that you can see every single person that works in Prestat, there's such an honor and pride of being recognized by the Royal family, which is uh, incredible. And I find that what is the best thing about Prestat's history is that it always kept a very flamboyant, positive and joyous vibe. Yeah. And that you, you, you can see it clearly in the packaging. You can see it also a lot in the recipes that are very creative and everything, but most importantly, you can really, I hope at least, see it today in the factory. Like the goal is, you know, we want to make chocolate to make people happy and to do that, our own team has to be happy that is a priority obviously we've been working amid very challenging times as you mentioned with the pandemic and 
particular. How difficult has that been day to day to get everything out? Very, honestly. And I was mentioning before, like it's the uncertainty that is really, really, really hard to handle. Because the moment you know, you know, I think the UK was great in doing that. They said lockdown until April 12th. That allows you to plan, you know, and to assess both in terms of like, you know, financial structures, cash flows, debts and stuff like that, but also in terms of how you plan your strategy. What is really hard right now is that we kind of lost that certainty, right? So I just ended a call now with um, all the ops team and we have rightfully so, most of our staff are going on holidays, you know, and they're going to Poland, they're going to Romania, some of us are going to Italy and everything. And right now it is completely unpredictable to understand when are these people going to come back? Because, you know, the, the rules are changing daily. The rates of infections are just absolutely, I am a perfect example of that, out of control. So ultimately I find that that has been uh, the hardest part. And it's, but it's picking up and people are quite uh, excited, let's say, of going back to normal. So we've seen our volumes from April already, obviously, like people started ordering a lot more. And then come September, October, when they had the, at least in the UK, we really had a breather, right? Like, and it was incredibly different because in Italy, like COVID is still the first topic. Like you meet somebody, the first conversation you have is COVID. Versus here, I thought that we had sort of gone back to a normality and that was definitely reflected in the business confidence and hence uh, obviously also on the order volumes and now we'll just have to see what happens in the next two three months we keep the confidence though absolutely obviously we are at a very interesting point in the year surrounding coming up to christmas very soon um, has prestat really pressed ahead with new product development for the season Absolutely. For, that is our best trade and our worst trade because as you know, like uh, ideally you'd want to run a business that is standardized. We are exactly the opposite. We think, I think we create at least two, three different recipes a month. Then obviously there's a very particular like uh, process to select which ones will actually go to market or not. Um, we work with a lot of our clients also on a tailored recipe for them. I would say that uh, John Lewis, for example, this year we did wonderful like eggnog bars and gingerbread bars that were absolutely delicious. And right now we're actually, oh, so this Christmas is gone, thankfully. We're, this week is the last week of final Christmas deliveries. And then we can all take a breather and start Easter. But I think the main key recipes that we've developed for the first half of next year is uh, to celebrate the Jubilee, obviously. We've... Uh, partner up uh, to actually be present at the parade and a few other events and we're launching uh, a line dedicated to it with a lot of like british focus flavors so i can't oh, wait brilliant. for that so have you had any communication with the royal household in regard to that at all or? it's going to be a surprise for them <laughs> yeah for we're with them like our closest relationship let's say as the suppliers is obviously a focus a lot on easter so that's the other big uh, um, it's a very characteristic moment in Presta, which I think is one of the, the best moments of the year. It's the making of the Easter eggs for the royal family. They're like humongous eggs filled with hundreds of different truffles and everything. And it's always a moment that brings the whole team together and knowing that in a very simple way, you're part of their lives and their family life. So, and then of course they, they purchase from us all their like, uh, Christmas stock and everything. But I think Easter is a topical moment of the year with regards to the Royal family. Excellent. Well, I look forward to seeing what emerges. I am aware that the Queen does like her specific Easter egg delivered. So we'll uh, look forward to seeing what that looks like. In Indeed. The coming ahead, so. And we're using a Criollo chocolate because you know, our sister company is specialized in this like quite rare um, cocoa bean Criollo. We actually have the farms as well and so this year is going to be a 100% Criollo dark uh, egg and then filled with hundreds of Prexat uh, concoctions, truffle fondants and the likes. Regarding the chocolate there, it's uh, Domori, the, the sister company there, how important is having a reputable business like that linked to yourselves? But as that we want to make quality and there's no way of making quality if your raw materials are not the best in the market and the money is just the best in the market uh, the, the quality like the way they select obviously the cocoa beans working directly with all the coffee farmers and then how they roast them and everything at this low temperature makes 
like the aroma, if you taste just also the, the raw cocoa bean, the roasted, sorry, not raw, cocoa bean in the mori is just an explosion of flavors. So it is absolutely a game changer for us, especially in a market where I always equate, you know, a 70%, 80% bar, I equate to an espresso versus truffles, fondants, and all these more like joyous recipes, if you want, I equate to cappuccino. But ultimately, even if in the cappuccino you add milk, you can still at the end taste whether the coffee is of good quality or not. So for us, having Domari's chocolate and couverture is uh, absolutely a game changer. The challenge then is to communicate that. I find that we really have to be better at explaining to the market that the raw materials we use are the best both in terms of quality but especially and importantly also in terms of sustainability in a market where people i would say because there's so much going on with making a truffle so many other ingredients i would think like any truffle has at least you know 10 15 ingredients you tend to use less prime chocolate cover to work because obviously it, it's whilst chocolate is still the protagonist it, it's in a conglomerate of other things versus we have to go back to emphasizing the quality of the key ingredient, which is absolutely chocolate. The reason why I love my current role so much is that we really are in the situation where we can make anything happen. And for me, they're the two key, actually three, quality already discussed, thank God that is done, check. We can ensure that any single truffle that leaves our factory is top-notch quality. But then we are really working a lot on relaunching the brand. So as I told you, like, actually getting the narrative out there and trying to build a really human connection with our clients. And that is something that is, it's an art, honestly, it's not, it's not a science. It's really hard that, you know, branding, marketing, and actually getting the story right to the right people. And then in terms of operations, which I'm a huge operations geek, I actually love this aspect of the business. We really are trying to get really inspired by the world of startups, right? Where everything can be done more efficiently. So we are challenging every single process we do. It's how do you make this faster? How do you make this better? How do we standardize this? And a lot of, you can see the changes in the factory. So we've moved a lot of machinery around, reworked all the flows to make them more efficient. We've got new fridges because obviously our volumes are increasing. So a lot of changes in the in Park Royal. Uh, as for your own experience, can you tell us a bit about your own story about you know, how you came into the industry in the first place, if you could, thanks. Yes. Well, clearly, um, I was born in a family of uh, entrepreneurs, food and beverage. Um, originally, uh, my family used to focus only on coffee, and then we diversified with always, uh, the aim was always to find companies that respected Ely's values, which were always ethics and sustainability and quality, like always top of the market quality. So fast forward a lot of years, we acquired Presta back in 2019. Um, in terms of my own experience, I mean, I left home when I was, I was born in Trieste, clearly. I left home when I was quite young, went to study in boarding school, after which I decided to, I've always had a passion for, I'm a bit geeky, so I went on to study biology here in London. That's when I fell in love with the city. I can't think of another place I would rather live. So I graduated from uh, Imperial College in biology after which I started working in a startup here in London called uh, Snack. They were working also in the food industry, tackling uh, food waste actually. And uh, then I went to, back to Italy to work in a consulting firm called Boston Consulting Group. There too, I was very, very lucky to, obviously like you, you're a generalist, right? You don't get to pick your projects, but I think I annoyed people enough to be able to get staffed on all the FMB projects. So that was another, incredible experience because you get to, it's a great job you get to work on very high level strategic uh, projects such as you know new product launches m a new market entries and everything with very large companies so i was able to work with a lot of companies that are now our competitors if you want um, after which i came back to london did a master's in management at london business school back to italy two more years of bcg and then uh, finally like my blood was boiling because i really wanted to you know, have my own business. I've always, 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 entrepreneurship was never a question for me. It's what I want to do for, for my whole life because I see companies as a way of creating value. I guess every single person at the end of the day wants to have fulfillment in life and generate value, whether, no matter how you do it, right? For me, the way was entrepreneurship and I've always known that. So then I, 
had this, uh, I have this startup in Italy that is in a completely different sector. We actually work with restaurants, but we're a payment mechanism uh, for, for restaurants. That was an incredible experience because obviously that allowed me to really, um, not master, but learn the art of how startups work, which is incredibly, incredibly different from how SMEs and large corporations work. You know, like you're always giving your best you're always incredibly fast you the idea of like failing fast right the prototype try if we fail it's fine because you're on to the next one so ultimately that's where i think i got most of my my grits when i was working and running it's levy i was then uh, asked to join the board of presta because i think every single person in my family knows that i have a sort of obsession with uh, with london and so when there was a chance to you know enlarged the board they offered me the position i still remember the day i was back home in italy and i told my parents like this is the best opportunity of my life i can't believe like i actually get to you know even just witness a british business that has such a long-standing history with this country that i appreciate so much and then during the the very peak of the pandemic last year with andrea we were discussing you know the leadership positions in in Presta. we actually i interviewed a few other people that were supposed to have uh, my role and then ultimately, you know, when it starts just uh, a line, and I was like, why don't you go? I was like, yeah, actually, I, I quite could. We took a very precautionary approach because the last thing you want to do, I think, when you are in these positions is go all in and then step back. I think that is incredibly detrimental to a company. Like, that's why we started in the exact opposite. We're like, okay, let's do three to six months, however much we need to test if this you know, if, if Prestat is right for me, but more importantly, if I'm right for Prestat, because the company for us is always comes first, you know, like we, I call it like inverted the stake shareholder model, like first all the stakeholders, employees, suppliers and everything, the larger community, the last are the shareholders. But ultimately at work, I think I completely fell in love with uh, the story of Prestat, but most importantly with the people that I found there and with the challenge. I like, uh, I like a good problem. So these three drivers really convinced me after one month that, okay, this is the place where I'm going to be for at least a few years. And uh, it's been tough for sure. Also because obviously we, I had a lot of support from the body, but especially given COVID, we couldn't really travel. So there were times that I was like, I am on my own in this. And it's the first time I'm actually having to deal with a challenge this big. And the decisions I make today are going to influence the futures of at least a hundred people, you know? Uh, so it was tough for the first few months, but now uh, it's still tough some days, you know, some days you wake up and you go there and you have 10 people around you being like, do they have this problem and this problem and that machine broke down and the driver didn't come pick up the orders and the fridge broke every day, every day. But, Again, it's a learning experience of knowing that you just have to find, you know, that North Star and keep on every day with consistency going towards the, the desired direction and never giving up. That's that's the thing. At the end of the day, it's resilience, right? Yeah, and as we were talking about earlier, that, uh, you know, women in management positions within our industry are few and far between, unfortunately. So do you think that that is changing in the industry, would you say? Absolutely. And honestly, I think I have a biased view on this because I'm Italian. So for me, when I lived in the UK, I never thought about these topics. Never. It just doesn't cross your mind, right? Because you don't see the misbalance of genders. Like, we you know, at Imperial, once you graduate from there, every single person wanted to go to investment banking. And there was absolutely zero. It was never an issue. It was never a topic. Oh, yeah, but I'm a woman, so maybe they won't hire me. In Italy, it's very different. In Italy, it really is true that there is incredible lack of women in leadership positions. But most importantly, it's true that women are treated differently. Here, I find that that is not that it's not the case, but much less so. We still do have some. Personally, I don't suffer that that much. I think the only thing that I could that I, I suffer a bit from that the difference between being a guy and a woman in this position is the the attention and the passion and the care women put in doing a task you know it's 80 percent is never good enough it has to be 110 and then you are ready to submit a strategy a proposal a budget or anything and that unfortunately sometimes whilst it is great because clearly the quality of the work in theory is going to be very high unfortunately it also means that the stress you put in yourself 
And sometimes also the time it will take you is, uh, could be a trade-off and detrimental at some times. Um, what are your thoughts about the new year? Are you hopeful that the business will continue to grow and face the challenges ahead? Absolutely. So as I said, three focuses of uh, next year is we're going to have this complete brand relaunch. Actually, I can't wait to show you some samples. So obviously we have the new Jubilee line, but we're reworking all our packaging to really make, like we want our packaging to tell the story, you know, the story of heritage, of like British chocolate making craftsmanship, of being in London. Like we're one of the only, I would say, like actually large scale chocolate operation in London. And most importantly, what I want our new packaging to transmit is the joy and positive positivity of the brand. And the really important focus right now on uh, the brand relaunch strategy is the sharing. Like we really understood that because of the history and the character of Prestat, we are a chocolate that is to be consumed with your loved ones, whether it's for a gifting occasion, whether it's opening it with family after dinner, you know, that is what we really want to focus on, gifting and uh, sharing. And hopefully the brand relaunch will help, both in terms of the design, then uh, we obviously have a lot of new recipes coming out. My favorite will probably be the pistachio one. I'm a big uh, pistachio lover. And coffee, there's going to be an insane, obviously with Lily coffee, a uh, new chocolate um, coffee truffle that will come out next year. Uh, then the second part, of course, priority is the um, IoT in the factory. So we're investing in not only new machinery, but most importantly on data systems and IoT to help us track much more efficiently all the information flows between the business units. And that is going to be an incredible change, which I'm sure some will resist, but that will be a big change in how we actually run the company. And last but not least, which I would say is actually the most important one, we any business owner, entrepreneur, anything should really have on their agenda is obviously tackling sustainability. We are, as any SME, honestly, like I think a lot of companies say they're sustainable, but you have this expression in Tali, tradire il fare c'è il mare, so between what you say and what you do, there's an ocean, right? So uh, in Prestat, fitting with, you know, our brand, our brand, our history and everything, we focused, we've always focused a lot on social responsibility. So as I said before, my, my first aim is for every single employee of Presta to come to work happy, you know, and, and care for their welfare and any need and career developments, anything that there is to really foster our internal community, if you want. And then we obviously have a lot of initiatives with charities. We work with Quest uh, to, um, to support uh, British craftsmanship and everything. But the next big challenge will be also environmental sustainability. Of course, half of our like uh, raw materials come from the Mahdi and that is as sustainable as it gets. So we are already quite far ahead with the brand relaunch. We reviewed all our packaging and took out every single last piece of plastic that there is in, uh, in our packaging. But the road to carbon neutrality, if you want, is quite, uh, is quite long. But we're on it, we're committed, it's gonna take time, but I'm sure we will achieve that soon. No, that's brilliant.